Good day, Brutal Planet followers. This is Eric Peterson in Salt Lake City. And today it is my distinct honor to be joined by Mr. Toby Samet of the mastermind behind Avantasia. How are you today, Toby? Hello, I'm fine. How are you? I'm great. I'm great. Where are you joining us from today? From um, from my um, from my study at home. Oh, nice, <laughs> nice. Right in the middle of Germany, right in the middle of Germany, Fulda, a small town. I'm actually from the suburbs. It's very green outside. Well, actually, right now it's very black outside because it's dark. Yes. Uh, but, but yeah, from home, from home. And things are good there. Absolutely perfect. Good. I mean, it's it's very calm. Not really calm these days because of the promotion I'm doing. Yeah. But uh, yeah, yeah, it's it's all good here. Oh, good. So we're here to talk about the new Avantage album, the A Paranormal Evening with the Moonflower Society, which right out of the gate. I love the title of that album. How did you come up with the title? Um, I, I tried to find a title that would represent the epicness of the album. In a way. It was, and the magic. And yeah, uh, I approached, I approached the album story wise. I approached the album like a visit to a magic theater whose protagonists um, would um, take the listener into a quirky, surreal, um, different world, like um, Alice down the rabbit hole. Yeah, and I try to find a to to find a name for those protagonists, and they they were the Moonflower Society to me, very obviously, because they are uh, they um, they pop up at night. They pop up in my head at night whenever I start working and when I start to be creative. When I lock the studio door behind me, and I encounter all these weird. Um, inspirations and muses and spirits and sparks that take me to different worlds musically and lyrically uh, when I become creative. So uh, I try to find a name for that and I approach it like a, a visit to the theater of the, Par of the Moonflower Society. And I thought it was, first I thought it should be called An Evening with the Moonflower Society, but that sounded like a, like a live album. So yeah, I thought, yeah. I should add something to that. And I don't know, sometimes those things put themselves together on their own. And I mean, that's, I, I, hmm? I love it. It's a great, and so the first song is Welcome to the Shadows. And it reminds me of an old Alice Cooper song mashed up with kind of a meatloaf vibe going to it. Is the it's song- great. That's great association. Isn't it? I mean, is, is, is this our, is this the, Proper introduction to the Moonflower Society, that song? Uh, yeah, yeah. It is. Okay. I mean, you know, the, the album is not is not written like it's an ongoing story. It yeah. doesn't really have a plot. It's more like a song cycle. Yeah. It's a song cycle, but the Welcome to the Shadows is the introduction. It's just like come into our surreal world. You may see things that you're not prepared for, but you may find shelter and peace here. And uh, that's... And the funny things, the associations you have, you're, you're, I haven't heard that before, but I think it's exactly what it is uh, because I always thought it has a, a bit of a, it has these two different uh, characteristics. Yeah. One is that eerie, surreal, um, quirky horror movie theme. Exactly. The verse and the and the and the pre-chorus, and in the chorus it becomes almost something like Rocky Horror Picture Show. Exactly. It becomes a bit cartoonish. And that's something I, I realized as well. And here's how the song came together. It's, it was an accident. And mostly those accidents are the best thing that could happen because they are all based on intuition. Mm -hmm. um, I, I fell asleep in front of my TV at 10 o'clock at night. And I woke up at 1 at night. And there was John Carpenter's Christine ah. on there. And of course, I had seen the the movie a couple of times. Yeah. But for the first time, I realized how cheap the the sounds yeah. of his <laughs> movie score sound, while they are still very eerie and very intense. Yeah. And I thought that's a strange combination because usually you have Hans Zimmer or Jerry Goldsmith and all these massive. 240 tracks, orchestras, soundtracks, and there you have those 70s synthesizer sounds. Yep. And he creates with relatively little a very intense atmosphere. And that was so 
that set the the the, the, the uh, that lit the spark, so to speak. Nice. So I immediately went to my studio and started to play around with cheap synthesizer sounds. Oh, okay. And and the song literally wrote itself, and that's where the song started from. That's that's what the song. The roots of the song. That's interesting. Much. That's very interesting. Yeah. I mean, and the funny thing when I when I mentioned the Alice Cooper thing, and and it's kind of on a side note, but I, I with your collaboration with Alice Cooper on the Toy Master, that was my introduction to to Avantasia, and that's kind of what opened the door to me. Because so I I always like to tell people how important it is when you do these when you do these collaborations, it opens the doors to this Absolutely. to this world. Absolutely. And Alice Cooper opened a lot of doors for me in North America, and I really thank him a lot. I mean, um, that was back then. It was not to be taken for granted, his participation. It was pretty much because I had worked with Eric Singer yeah, of Kiss, yeah. um, who had not been in Kiss at the time. He was in Alice. Uh, maybe, oh yeah, he was in Kiss. The first time I met him, he was not in Kiss. By then, he was in Kiss, but he was also an on and off drummer for Alice and um and we were rehearsing the song together in the studio, recording the song. Eric was there. And he said, oh, I think we both, I don't know who had the idea, but I thought that would be a great track for Alice. And Eric said, yeah, but you have to be really particular about the lyrics because Alice is really picky when it comes to lyrics. It has to fit the character of Alice Cooper. Yeah. And I came up with a toy master. I wrote the lyrics and I thought like, okay, how would I approach the lyrics if I was Alice Cooper? Now, I don't know if I can imagine to be Alice Cooper, but I gave my best, and apparently it was convincing. And Alice said, to my surprise, to this little boy from a German <laughs> little village, uh, he said, yeah, of, of course, Toby, I'm going to do it. I, of course, you're Alice Cooper, and I'm a nobody. Yeah, yeah. Fuck. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but he, 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 um, he did it, and it opened a lot of doors. And I'm, to this day, I'm very, very thankful and um, I really appreciate Alice's support. He also played it in his radio show. He spread the word. Yeah. And I think he was all, also, when Alice said yes, I think it was also, no, I think Rudolf Schenker had said, had agreed to be part of Fantasia, uh, Scorpions, Rudolph, yeah. before Alice. So, okay. But definitely those names definitely helped me. And it's not just for the names. You know, honestly speaking, I'm really proud to be, to have Alice on my record. Yeah. There's nothing to be taken for granted. You don't have somebody like Alice Cooper on your record every day. No, 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 <laughs> no. So another one of my favorites is right next, next, the next song, which is the Wick, Wicked Rule, or the Wicked Rule of the Night, I should say, which the song has a very Hellfire Club and Man Drake from Ed Guy kind of a feel to it. Um, yeah. And then how did, how did that song develop? Did, was, when when you decided to get Ralph, was was it when you made that song? You said, "Okay, this only can be sung by Ralph," or did it just progress that way? No, that was exactly the case. I oh, was, was putting it? the song together. I was putting the song together, and I thought, like, if I sing it by myself, it's going to be too obviously Mysteria Part Two. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It, it 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 really it was a bit in that Mysteria direction. And first, I th the song came together very naturally too. And of course, you question. Uh, should I be doing this or is this too close to Mysteria? But then I said, like, <laughs> I'm not going to sue myself. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, a re it's, it's a reprise and it's my handwriting and I don't want to deny my handwriting. Exactly. It's there. And it wasn't done on purpose. It happened. And then you should allow things to happen. And when I wrote the, the, the verse, after I had written the verse, I think The Wicked Rule of the Night was probably the second last song I wrote for the album. Okay. The second last or the last song. It was um, uh, Welcome to the Shadows and Wicked Rule of the Night were the two last songs I wrote for the album. Um, so when I had the, the verse written, um, I knew uh, it has to be sung by Ralph. Yeah. For some strange reason, I knew it. And it was very, very obvious. And I gave him, uh, I sent him a text message. I had known him for a couple of years and I sent him a text message and said, Ralph, I got this song for you for Avantasia. Um, this is not a request. This is an order. You have to sing it because <laughs> nobody else will be able to sing it that way. And uh, Of course, he felt flattered. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because, of course, I let him know how much he is needed for that song. Yeah. Because nobody else could do it that way. Yeah. 
and it, I, it was honest and heartfelt. And he listened to the track that was nine o'clock at night and he got back to me, he said, uh, a text message again, hey, it's amazing. Give me a week. I have so many things to do, but in one week, you have the recording back. I'm going to do it in my studio. Uh, that's what he told me. Next day, 11 in the morning or a little bit after 11 in the morning, um, he got back to me, uh, sending me a text message. Hey, Toby, check your emails. I sent you WeTransfer. It's recorded. Oh, Here you have it. Wow. So he was singing it right away. And I talked to him afterwards. He said, hey, Toby, I really liked it so much. I just wanted to do it. <laughs> yeah. To bring it on, bring it on. Let yeah. me scream on it. And nice. Yeah, those things are always, you know, when things like that happen, that's the best. Yeah. And then, then it's, it's, it was very emotional for me to know how somebody is so infected by a song idea or a song that he immediately has to get into the vocal booth and start recording. And that's, that's a perfect way to describe it, infected. I mean, and I feel like for even as a listener, a lot of the Avantasia albums to me are very infective. You know, you just, you get into them and then you really get into them and then they're in your head. And it's like, you just, it's, it's like you, it's like an infection, a good infection. Thank you very much. We don't have many of those. <laughs> no, we don't. <laughs> <laughs> No, thank you. Thank you very much. But I have to I have to say as far as songs go on the album, my by far my favorite song is Misplaced Among the Angels. Um I've I've always loved what you've done with your female guest, but the piece you did with Floor is just simply magic. Um again, did you write that song with her in mind or just did no, it that's, come That's <clears throat> that's actually very funny because that song was not written with her in mind. That song is actually a leftover from the Moonglow session. Oh, was it? Okay. Um, yeah, yeah. It was not recorded back then. I mean, parts were recorded back then, but not not everything. And I think we changed some of the lyrics. Um, but uh, I I had Floor in mind because I knew she was a great singer and, and, she, and she's a great singer. And Sasha confirmed it because Sasha had worked with her previous band after Forever and he had been the producer of that band. Uh-huh. Uh so so uh Sasha Penn, our producer and, and guitar player yeah. uh, I'm talking about. So uh so we both agreed that it would be a great idea to work with Floor because she has so many vocal possibilities. She is a great singer and very um versatile and, and uh, amazing singer. So I got in touch and she said, Yeah, uh I could be part of Amtasia. Send me the song. And I sent her misplaced among the angels. And she was, hmm, it's not bad, but it's not exactly my range. Huh. It, my, range is a, my range is a bit higher usually. And I was, I, I was a bit like, okay, um, um, never mind. Give me a few days. I'm going to write something for you. Wow. And I wrote Kill the Pain Away. Um, and I sent her Kill the Pain Away a couple of days later, which I wrote with her in mind specifically. Yeah. And she said, oh, yeah, that's perfect. That sounds like an 80s pop song with, with heavy guitars. I'm going to record it. And a couple of weeks later, she got back to me and she said, okay, Kill the Pain Away is, is recorded. Here you have it. And by the way, I also recorded Misplaced Among the Angels because I've gone through it a couple of times. And I really like it, I have to say. I, I became acquainted with it. So here you have it too. And that was how Misplaced Among the Angels. So all of a sudden I have two songs with Floor. Nice. And one was written with her in mind. One was written um, with nobody specifically yeah. in mind, which she thought was, at first she thought it was not going to work with her voice. But as you can hear and as everybody can hear, and the reaction to that song is breathtaking. It is. She it is. Was, it was an understatement. She was really, really uh, delivering on that track too. Yeah, yeah, she did. And and the pairing how how you mixed it with your voice and her voice is just is perfect. And I, I like I, the song is a beautiful song in its own. But to have those two voices on it, just it it just it's like the frosting on top of the cake. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, uh, they, they, what I think is so beautiful about that song is that the voices rep, rep each other's around each other. Exactly. The, the way, the way they, they, they intertwine or whatever you call it. It's, yeah. it's just, uh, 
It's just, they, 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 they fit together really well. But I think on this whole record, not just between Floor and me, I think all the duets are very intense duets. It's not just using this passage, using that passage. We have quite, a, quite some passages where Eric and I sing together, where Bob and I sing together, where Jeff and I sing together. I think there's no album in the history of Amtasia where um, with more passages or with as many passages where two or three singers have been singing at the same time together, backing each other. Yeah. So I think the, the duets on these records are superb. It's different. In the past, it's always been, okay, you sing this package, you, uh, passage, you sing that passage. It's more chopped up. This time, everything is interacting with each other. And you know what? I've been given 280 interviews or maybe 575 <laughs> for this new album. And this is actually the first time I realized that. And now that I think about it, that's, it's, it's really, it's something I should have said from the very beginning because now that I think about it, that, that's actually, that, that's a huge difference to previous albums. Yeah, yeah. Because it's you usually my first, part, your you part. You the first to get that information. Wow. <laughs> wow. It was true. It's true. Yeah, yeah, it is. Think about it. And that's that's why that's why we have many more, not just duets singing at each other back and forth, um, one after another, but we have so many passages where we all where two singers or more sing together really the same line, two voices or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. So you I mean we we talk about guests, we talked about some of the guests on your album. Do you find it easier to today to bring guests on board now that the project has grown so much? Um, yeah, but I, I don't know. I don't know. It's, I mean, I, I, the project was quite big for the, for the, for the, uh, I think ghost lights record also. Oh yeah. And I tried to get meatloaf back then. And I was the management first was interested in doing it. And then they turned it down because they said, Oh, we have our own plans. And, we have the time schedule doesn't allow it. So you uh, you can't really say that it's easier. Of course, it's easier yeah. than it used to be in the very beginning. Yeah, yeah. Because you have something to show to people and can say, hey, look, the last record's been a number one. We have platinum discs and we're playing arenas. And of course, that makes it easier than when you say, hey, I have an idea. I want to do a record. Mm -hmm. And it has to be, you know, that's difficult. Then you have to explain a lot and that's not very convincing. Yeah. But... Um, but the thing is also on this new record, we didn't have so many new no, um, no. musicians or singers that had not been part uh, of Avantasia because I, I was so happy to mainly rely on my um, stable family, on yeah. my long-time family, because those singers, Eric Martin and Bob Ketley, Ronnie Atkins, Jorn Landy, uh, Michael Kiske, um, who have I forgotten? Jeff Tate, obviously. Jeff Tate. Um, they, together, they are able to um, cover such a huge spectrum yeah. of vocal characteristics, different and individual vocal characteristics, that they give me everything I need as a songwriter That's true. to create a very, very diverse record that covers everything about music that I appreciate about music. Yeah. Well, I, I wanted to ask you too, I know at one point I saw an interview and I'd heard on the interview that you wanted to get Joe Elliott on a song. Did I say that? Yeah, then it's probably true. Yeah. yeah I and to get Joe Elliott. And I, 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 really th I really thought it might happen this album because I saw – Kevin Nixon was shooting for you, and I thought, oh, that's Toby's <laughs> in. That's Toby's in. He's going to get Joe. <laughs> yeah, obviously, Kevin Nixon doesn't have... Uh, the poll. <laughs> doesn't, doesn't, isn't able to control Joe Elliott. No, but he, yeah. I mean, he can throw. Honestly speaking, I have, I, have, I have, prior to the album production process, I have very, very loosely touched base and to see if there was a possibility but apparently there was not. I don't know. Um, I went. I went the official way. Yeah. Uh, through the management, and um, well, they they didn't like the idea. 
They, they, they just lost their photographer to me. They don't want to lose their <laughs> finger to me as well. <laughs> good point. That's a good point. No, I have no idea. How, how, no, Kevin, Kevin Nixon is still working for Def Leppard. I mean, he's a, he's an amazing photographer. He is a very good photographer. What a lovely guy to hang out. He is. To hang out. With. He is. So, um, yeah. It's, I mean, there's there's nobody I enjoy hanging out in the photo pit with more than Kevin Nixon. Yeah, he's lovely. He's always he's always grinning, and whenever you drag him into the spotlight, he's he's a bit ashamed. Yeah, he is. And of course, and of course, that's <laughs> that's you know the fiend in me loves to be aware of that fact. Yeah. <laughs> and so for me, I love. I love sharing photos with him on social media of me taking a photo of him taking a photo of you. Okay. I, I, did you do that? Okay. That's yeah. funny. Yeah. I've done that before. <laughs> he's lovely. He's a, he's a lovely chap. Yeah. If only he had a better taste in football. That's <laughs> so my, my last question for you is, is, is just question um, who, who haven't you had that you would like to see on an Avantage album? Oh, Bruce Dickens and Paul Stanley. I don't have a huge bucket list, I have to say. Okay. Um, because bucket lists show... Uh, I, th I think you should be a bit more modest uh, than... Uh, I mean, bucket list is always like, uh, I expect this to happen, I expect that to happen. You know, first in, in the first place, I'm happy about what I have been yeah. able to experience. I have been able to experience so much um, I have been granted uh, to tour the world 12 times now. I've done 19 albums of uh, gold records. I have um, played um, the biggest festivals. Um, are you still with me? Yeah, I am. Okay, okay. it was just the, the, the screen just turned black. Oh, it did. Um, I played the, the, biggest, the biggest festivals. And, and, you know, I've experienced way more than I could have as, ever asked for. That's why I think bucket list always sound a bit like greedy. <laughs> yeah, they do. But if there was a good fairy, which I think is as unlikely as an alien knocking my door, <laughs> knocking at my door, asking me to play one song to him that is representative of my work, which is as unlikely as me having to go to a desert island with three records of my choice and nothing else. True. Um, <laughs> but in case there was a fairy granting me three wishes, I would say um, one week sold out Madison Square Garden uh -huh. first. An album that is as successful in the USA as Bad Out of Hell Part 1, yeah. second. And the third wish is um, a song with Bruce Dickinson and Paul Stanley, Joe Elliott, Rob Halford, and Steven Tyler. <laughs> <laughs> Thank, there's not, I, I've always say, I always say shoot for the moon, so. Yeah, I shoot for the moon. But, you know, seriously speaking, I'm absolutely happy with what I have. Exactly. And also, I have to say, I have to say, I don't want Avantasia. And that's why I really, I rarely name names when it comes to bucket lists. I really um, don't want Avantasia to be perceived or um, considered an a band that has three or four new superstars on every record because you run the risk of putting the music itself second. Yeah. You know, yeah. and I don't, I don't want that to happen. I don't want people to say, Oh, we don't care for the fucking song. Most importantly, he's got, who, who are the singers he has on the new album? True. I don't want this to happen. Well, I want to have a great song and the people I work with, Jeff, and Eric, Bob, Jorn, Ronnie, Michael Kiske, they are the best of the best on their respective field. Now, Ed so true. And, and Ralph, I have the best singers technically and emotionally that you can have in their respective area. Yeah, I agree. And they know about the nature of Amtasia and what the songs need, and they put their soul into those songs. That's the most important thing. That's way more important than bringing somebody in who considers himself to be a special guest who's doing a session for maybe a big check or whatever. Yeah. I rather want people who identify with the music, who understand the music, 
and to fill it with life and soul. And those people I have. Yeah. And that's why I'm absolutely happy with my Amtasia family. You've got it. I mean, that's a perfect way to put it. I mean, you just nailed it. I mean, you've got the perfect family right there. Absolutely. So, well, I appreciate your time, Toby. I know you've got plenty more interviews coming up, don't you? That, yeah, yeah. But yeah. thank you very much. I appreciate your interest in my music. Oh, I and- a huge fan, huge fan, and I love I love the new album. And everybody, pick it up. It comes out this Friday. Thank you very much. Thanks for spreading the word. And uh, um, yeah, and I'll I'll send you a couple of photos of Kevin taking photos of you. <laughs> That's great. Thank you. Thank All you. right. Thanks, Toby. Have a lovely day. You Thank too. You. Bye. Bye bye. <laughs>